Come on. Who is not inspired by that? My goodness. That is uh, Liz Hamilton, our Highfield small group pastor. And just, man, like weekly, she's challenging me to do a run from Highfields to Highlands. And I'm like, haha, maybe next year. <laughs> Oh, like that's just intimidating. My goodness. <laughs> well, welcome to Highlands. It's great to see you all here tonight. Uh, my name is Ben. I'm uh, one of the team here. And I'm really excited to speak tonight. I, I was thinking about making a joke, being like, oh, I haven't preached since last year. <laughs> Uh, Well, there I did it anyway, so. But I I am really excited to speak uh, tonight and even just on this topic of uphill habits. Man, what a way to start our year, that we get to take some time and decide, hey, in 2022, I am making some uphill habits in my life. Because this is the time, right, where we all want to be better, Right, I'm sure a bunch of you set some New Year's resolutions the last night, last couple of nights, different things. And I, I think we could all agree that no one set mediocre New Year's resolutions, right? Like, I don't think anyone was, you know, waiting out at Queen's Park when the fireworks didn't go off, going, okay, you know what? My effort at work this year will be mild, setting it in. Relationships, bland. Health, KFC, that's the goal, bucket every day, right? No, no one's reminiscing on mediocre goals, are we? No, we, we, we always dream big, right? Like who here didn't say like, if I get a Tesla this year, that would be awesome, right? No one's going, yeah, Ford Fiesta, yes. No, we all dream big, right? There's something in us that causes us to dream big, doesn't it? We want to be healthier. We want to be fitter. We want to be stronger. We want to earn more. We want to, to, to be kinder, be nicer, whatever it may be, as we think big, not small. And I don't think it's just a person thing. I, I think, and I know this is something that God has put in us, in our nature. In 1 Corinthians, it says this, and I've been reading this all week and it just keeps blowing my mind. But 1 Corinthians says this, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. God, like no, no, no mind has imagined. God has given us the gift of imagination, right? It's the most powerful tool He's given us to dream, to, to be inspired, to, to think bigger, to think larger, because that's what we should do. You know, if, if you're around Highlands at Christmas, we talked a lot about holding on to hope, right? The hope of Christmas that Jesus represented the hope for us that, hey, now, no matter how impossible the situation seems because of Jesus, there is hope for us to get through it. Because of Jesus, there is hope for us to see a better day, a greater day, that His hope is one of impossible situations, that He enables us to go on to something better, that is the, the, the hope of what we celebrated at Christmas, right? And I think that comes back to that imagination of believing for better. Really, that the hope of God has given us the power to believe that no, where we are now is not it, right? No matter what your 2021 looked like or your 2020 looked like, this year will be better. Come on, this year will be greater. No matter what the outset looks like situation-wise, because of Jesus, because of the hope that He has brought, we can imagine that is going to happen. I want to look at an example of the Israelites, right? When the Israelites escaped from Egypt as slaves for generations and they were following a promise, a hope, a dream they had from God of the promised land, right? Slaves for generation and God had told them, hey, I'm going to give you your own land. You will be my own people. Something special is coming. And I love the way in the Bible, and I've put a few more verses in the Bible if anyone wants to check along and follow along. But the way it's explained is uh, this promised land will be a land flowing of milk and honey. Okay, now why that is significant is what it represents, right? You've got milk and honey, but for them, this was something that was uh, excessive. It, It was lavish. It was abundance. Now, as slaves for generations, they didn't have that opportunity. They they didn't know what that was. So when they were hoping for this, they weren't hoping for mediocrity, right? They weren't hoping for the land of like three-week-old Christmas ham and Makona coffee. They were hoping for something more, bigger, right? There was excessive. It was lavish. It was bold, right? That's what they were hoping for. That's what the dream God had put in their heart. So when it comes for us, as I think very similar to this, is we shouldn't hope for mediocrity at the start of our year. We shouldn't hope for mediocrity in our lives. We should dream big. We should hope for big. Now, I know 
we're, we're all very much the same, where we get New Year's resolutions, but we also sort of like to knock them a bit, don't we? Right, we go, yeah, New Year's resolution, but we also go like, ah, but you know, we'll, we'll give up by March. Like, ah, oh, you know, they're so silly, all these things. But really, I, I, I think it is so much better to dream than not, right? As, as often as we say like, oh, silly New Year's resolutions, man, please do it. Please set some goals for your life. Please dream bigger. Please believe for more. I think now more than ever, we need to dream bigger. We've got to go just, again, not the Ford Fiesta, go for the Tesla. Go, we got to go bigger. Because I don't know about you, but I know for me, if these last few years have shown me anything, is that it is so easy and actually socially acceptable now to just slip into survival mode, right? It is normal, it is like celebrated just to head down, just push through to March, push through to January, push through to June, whatever it is. That's the normal. That's what's celebrated. That's going, hey, if you're doing that, good job. That is not the standard we should be living to, is it? If we, again, we just went through Christmas, went through celebrating Jesus. How do we, how do we now off the back of that honour God? How do we at the back of that honour the hope we have found in Christ? It comes by taking the freedom He's given us and saying, well, now watch what I'm going to do with it. As we dream, as we believe bigger, we're saying, well, now watch what I'm going to do with it. I'm not just going to sit back and, oh, this sucks. I'm just surviving, getting through. We're going, no, God, because you freed me, because you set me free, because you've empowered me to, to tackle any obstacle that comes my way, God, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to shoot for the stars. I'm going to dream big. I'm going to believe big, no matter how impossible it looks, because you are by my side. The exact opposite thing happened to that same group of Israelites that were chasing that dream, the, the land of excess and lavish, it, is that they squandered their newfound freedom. Instead of chasing the dream, what do they do is they complained. They looked back and, oh, well, remember back then it was so much better. And, oh, remember this. And, oh, now it's so hard. And, and they didn't use their freedom and say, well, now look what we're going to do. But they wasted it. They focused on the lack. They complained. They were in survival mode. Like very, like a lot of us maybe have been or maybe still are. Because again, remember that, that's the, the standard, that is fine. But you know, this actually cost them dearly. By wasting it is they were not able to go to the promised land. It was pushed back a whole generation because they were not able to get there because they didn't want to, because they were stuck looking back. They were stuck in survival mode. Man, it was delayed a whole generation. So as this year begins, I, I want to ask you guys a question. What generation do you want to be a part of? Right? Do you want to be the generation in the desert, in survival mode, waiting, complaining, going, oh man, 20, 2022, oh no. Are we going to be those people? Or maybe is it time for us to reject the notion that all we can do is survive? Is it time for us to go, nah, whatever happened in 2020, whatever happened in 2021, whatever's happened at work last year, whatever happened with my friendships last year, whatever I faced last year, I'm throwing it out the window and it's time to start to dream again. It's time to actually grab hold of the hope of God, hold, hold on to the dreams He's given us, that He's stirring in our hearts saying that, hey, you can do it when He is with you. And to start going, that is how I'm going to live this year, not how I've done it before. I'm not just surviving. We've got to start to believe that that land flowing in excess and abundance that God is taking us to is within reach. Come on, you can't just survive. We are called for so much more than that. Again, just off the back of Christmas, we can't just go, yeah, the hope of God is so real. This is fantastic. Then, oh man, here we go again, real life. Now, come on, God has so much more for you. Let's be part of the generation that walks in the promise. You know, this is why we're taking it a step up and we're talking uphill habits. I love that we're not just talking habits, but uphill ones. And I don't know, I look at that word as something so intentional. We're building steps that will make us better. Not just better, but steps that they require a bit of, bit of oomph, a bit of sweat, right? Something that is a little bit harder, something with a little bit of grunt, right? We're not just waking up early to go for a run around the cul-de-sac. No, we're doing hill sprints, right? We're not just, you know, doing Pilates. No, no, we're, we're doing like deadlifts. We're getting into it, right? Because think about it like this. If, if you can build uphill habits, right? If you can do the hard things, 
how much easier are the little jogs around the cul-de-sac? Are the little, I've never done Pilates, it's probably really hard, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, you know, last year actually, I, I set a little uphill habit for myself. Start of the year, I was motivated, I was like, and we're not talking about the success of this New Year's resolution, but anyway. But I, I set this uphill habit where I was going, you know, once a month, I am running 10Ks. One go, let's do it. You know, if Ben Young can do it, I can do it too. And again, we're not talking about the success of this habit, but I, I found, you know, once a month I, I try and do this and I found a, a good route around Queens Park, right? Queens Park, big square, right? And I found that it was good because it's mostly flat, right? Those sides, flat. But when you hit Margaret Street, right, it is just this, it's a subtle hill, but man, it's uphill. It gets you. And I found, I, don't know, I found as I was doing this though, is that if I could push through that uphill, if I just didn't stop, if I could keep my pace going, if I could just push through, man, the next three are easy because it was flat. I, was just, I, I could just zone out and then just, just go on my little run. If we can do the uphill habits, if we can build in something strong and hard, come on, it makes the others easier. Come on, because we're getting ready for a good year, aren't we? A better year, aren't we? You know, another thing that I found helpful uh, as I tried to build this uphill habit, five months out of 12, but what made those five months actually doable, right? I found when I did it with other people, there was a motivation there. When I went running with, with my friend Ben Young, when I went running with Aaron or our amazing worship leader and youth leader Noah, uh, I had motivation with friends, even just the motivation of, of peer pressuring my friends into doing it. Like, Dan, wait, we're going running one day. It just it motivates me when I pick on people, like, you're coming running with me. <laughs> but when I had someone by my side, it helped me. And I don't know whether it was from this revelation or maybe more likely God just told me something. But I, I think, and I've been thinking about it, is a misstep with taken in society, a little white lie we've, just, we've all believed, we've all given into is that our goals are meant to be singular, right? That life betterment and personal growth is exactly that, personal. I think this is the biggest part of where we fall down on these habits or these uphill habits, is we go, I'm gonna get better, this is what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do it alone. And that's why we get through like five out of 10 days of our prayer and fasting. That's why we get through to February and March of our New Year's resolutions and we're back to the KFC buckets is because we did it alone. We didn't do it alongside other people. Uphill habits, it is a community deal. Bettering yourself, getting better is a community deal. We are meant to do this together. Come on, we get better together for the betterment of ourselves and for others. We've got to get alongside each other. This is the year we've got to stop isolating, unless you have to, seven days or something like that. But in general, we've got to stop isolating. We've got to stop doing this ourselves. And we've got to look to what God says about community. We've got to look to what God says about how we get through this and the solutions God has very clearly and plainly put in front of us, which is community. Again, we, if we were to look at the promises of God, right, that we all love, we all read, we all get encouraged by, right, that, that talk about dreaming, that talk about abundance, that talk about provision and hope and all these things, a lot of them are in the context of community. Because let's look at the framework, right? I, I love this quote I read in a book where it says that if we're looking at how to know how God is speaking to us through the Bible that we're reading, it is that the Bible wasn't written to us but it was written for us. Very important to remember, and I'm, I'm glazing over a few things here because I just want you to, to get this. But when we read, say, God speaking to the Israelites, we can go, well, I'm a child of God. And so part of this is God is saying this to us as well, that He's saying it for us. He wasn't saying it specifically to me. I wasn't there thousands of years ago. But I can read this and know that it is for me. But again, a lot of it was to a crowd. A lot of it was to a community. Right, when Moses was relaying a promise to God, it wasn't to Steve in the back, like, hey, Moses was saying, Steve, do this. It was to the whole community. Right, when Jeremiah was directing his people, his army, a group Jesus was preaching to the crowds, to the masses. These are things that, again, it was always to a group of people. In Revelation, there's a final promise of how we overcome the enemy, how we overcome the battle. And it says this in Revelations that uh, the way they overcame the enemy was by, it says two things, the blood of the lamb, which is the sacrifice of Jesus and the word of their 
testimony. Now, testimony implies sharing, community, including. There's so many things that point towards it that we are meant to do this life together. Not just around each other, not just near each other, not just knowing what we're all doing, but actually if we want to succeed, if we want to go uphill, if we want to do better, we need to do it together. Come on, I gotta tell you, you are not designed to do life alone. Come on, if you wanna get better, if you wanna see more in your life, it's time to say no to those lies, no to those little things we've given into that it's strong if we get through it on our own. You go, well, God designed this life to be with others. God has put you on this earth for a purpose. That purpose is others. So as others, as a community here in Toowoomba at Highlands Church, what is an uphill battle, no, sorry, an uphill habit that we can all work on together? And that's why I, I, I'm so excited to, to preach on this tonight. I'm really excited to, as we start Fresh Air, this moment of prayer and fasting, because I think that is the best thing we can do together. An uphill habit we can build on and to strengthen each other, to strengthen ourselves, to get to the dreams and the promises we feel God is leading us to, is this moment of fresh air, this moment of prayer and fasting. Because if, I don't, know, I don't know about you, but fasting is the hill of habits, isn't it? Like it is the uphill habit. It is the big one, right? There's a reason we do it in January. It's not something that maybe we do every month, every week, every day. It's because it's a hard one, right? Whether we're fasting social media, watching TV, coffee or food in a hole, it is an uphill habit. But again, like uphill habits, if this is something we can learn, this is something that we can do and give ourselves to, wow, the reward that comes out of it. Wow, the change that comes out of it in our own lives. I think it's important to remember you know, what fasting is, why it's a habit we need to build into our lives. Because first off, okay, fasting and prayer, this time that we're doing, it is not that we are changing God, but it is God who is changing us, right? We're not twisting God's arm. We're not holding our breath and kicking our feet and stomping and causing a tantrum till He gives us our Tesla. No, it's, God changing us, right? We're giving up something physically to break something spiritually. It's a step of faith that says, God, I am serious. I wanna see this change. It is the, the blueprint God has given us for spiritual breakthrough. There's a moment where Jesus actually explains this to His disciples when they couldn't see spiritual breakthrough. They were trying to pray for someone, they were trying to cast out a demon and they couldn't see the breakthrough they needed so they had to call Jesus in. And it's recorded here in Matthew 17. He says this, he replies to His disciples when they ask Him for help. He says, you wicked and perverse generation. Ouch, it's not a good start. Jesus wasn't happy. He replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon. It came out of the boy and he was healed at that moment. Now, firstly, I just want to point out again, when Jesus is saying, you wicked and perverse generation, right? He wasn't just cranky. He wasn't just hangry. He didn't just have a bad morning, but he was highlighting something there. When he uses the word perverse, it might not be what you're thinking. It's a word called carnal, right? Which means someone who is too connected to the world too connected to their flesh, themselves to their sin, right? Too bogged down in that. And then when he says wicked, he means faithless. So he's saying you, you're, you're too connected to the world and you're too faithless. And I think that is the perfect example for when we're trying to see spiritual breakthrough, that this is the answer. Because he goes on to say, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. He wasn't just talking about casting out demons, but no, spiritual breakthrough. How do we see breakthrough in our habits when we're too connected to things that, again, the, the sins we have, the, the things in life we don't want to do, but we seem to always go back to. We know they hurt us, but why do I keep doing that? How do we see breakthrough there? We pray and fast. Come on, how do we see breakthrough when we don't have enough faith, when we're faithless, right? How, when we can't seem to believe for more, when we, we don't know how things are going to change. We pray and we fast. We disconnect from the world, fasting, and we connect to God, prayer. It is so important that those two go hand in hand. It connects us to God, disconnects us from the world. And I wanna tell you, it makes you stronger. You know, there's a moment in the Bible that 
I feel I've gotten wrong really until recently. There's the moment when Jesus gets baptised and He wanders through the wilderness for 40 days and, then he's, uh, and He's fasting and He's met by the devil and all these temptation moments happen. Jesus prevails. It's a good story, but I've always looked at it as like, you know, Jesus is 40 days, He's hungry, He's weak and the devil pops up and tries to trick Him in all these things. I've always thought that it's the devil coming to Jesus at His weakest. But what if it was the opposite? After 40 days of fasting, 40 days of disconnecting from the world, 40 days of, di- of connecting to God. I think it was actually Jesus going to the devil at his strongest. Come on, this is a moment that actually prepared him even more for this. And when we look at prayer and fasting, when we look at trying to face the breakthroughs we want to see in our lives, this is how we get to our strongest. Example after example in the Bible, we see prayer, fasting. It's the solution to breaking, overcoming these problems from a position of strength. I'm going to have a bunch of examples pop up on the screen behind me, but whether you're believing for healing is a big one. We can see in the Bible there that as David pleaded with God for the child, he fasted to see it happen. If you need wisdom as you're facing this year, Pray and fast in Acts. One day these men were worshipping the Lord, fasting. The Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for special work. So they needed, they needed to make sure this was from God. So they after more fasting and prayer. Even repentance, maybe you're feeling far from God and you want to restart your year, restart your relationship with God. Disconnect from the world, connect with God. Esther, a great story there. Uh, Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, go and gather together all the Jews and fast for me. I love that. There is a common theme here. What we see through these examples, through Jesus' example, through many examples, is a group of people, a group of people coming together saying no to preference, saying yes to purpose, saying no to their preference, no to what they've been enjoying, no to what is easy, and yes to purpose, yes to what they feel God calling them to do. And many, if you can take one thing home tonight, there is one thing I want you to remember, one thing I want you to know that I've been, I've been trying to lead this through the whole time, give you some background, give you some backstory, try and set things up. But this is the thing that oh, I've just been burning on my heart for so long as I look towards this year, I look to what God is doing uh, for us as Highlands, for us as Toowoomba and Highfields and this community. What God is doing in us is that if we want to build in this uphill habit, If we want to focus on what we're fasting for, what we should be fasting for is we disconnect and we connect to God. What is it that makes this thing the thing that sets our year apart? That we can look back this time next year and go, that was the moment everything changed. That was the moment my life turned around. That was the moment my faith became on fire. That was the moment I finally understood prayer and fasting. That was the moment I finally understood connecting with God. I could hear Him, I could experience Him. All these things. Man, it comes to doing it together. Prayer and fasting. If you want to take this from a habit to an uphill habit, if you want to take your relationship with God to the next level, this is something we do together. Because God's promises, remember, for His people. So therefore, our actions should be done together for His people and our people as well. Remembering and not isolating, not going alone, not just trying to push through, but going. No, we are doing this together. More more than just knowing other people are doing this, more than just knowing other people are praying and fasting and we're all doing this together. Like I know what my friend's doing and my mum and my dad, that's great. But I really mean fasting together. I want to ask you, why not fast for others as well? Because you know the things you want to break in your life. You know the spiritual breakthrough you want to see, but I want to challenge you tonight. If you want to make this uphill habit with a bit more grunt, a bit more sweat, and going to see a greater result, hey, why not pray and fast for more than just yourself? Why not flex a little bit of selflessness and go, you know what? I'm going to do this for my community. I'm going to do this for my city. I'm going to do this for my church. I want to see breakthrough more than just in my life, but in this world as well. I'm not just holding it on to me. Come on, as a church, let's see this spiritual breakthrough together. Because again, we look back at those Scriptures, we see a group fasting, a nation fasting, people getting together for one person and making that decision because they want to see spiritual breakthrough. Come on, that is where the power comes in. 
Come on, we've given up on that lie. We are not just surviving anymore. We are not just isolating anymore. We are not just doing this on our own. We are together. So let's find this purpose of doing it together. I love this quote from Mark Batterson. It's sort of similar to that experience I had with running with friends. Uh, he's a great author, a great preacher. He says this, part of what makes habit formation so powerful is when you do it for someone else. It's true, isn't it? And think about it, maybe you tried prayer and fasting before and you're just praying for yourself and the things you wanna see break, the things you wanna see change. And you know, maybe you get a few days in, it's getting a little tired, it's getting a little bit hard and you know that it only benefits you or no one else is gonna know. No one knows what the fruits of this will be. So it's sort of between you and God. And, but imagine now you're fasting for people struggling with mental illness in our community. You made a decision saying, you know what, I'm fasting so that depression is eradicated in this place. I'm gonna pray and fast. I'm gonna disconnect from, the, from my preferences and connect to my purpose, which is God, so that anxiety is not a thing that holds over people's lives in this place. Imagine you're doing it for, I don't know, the people without work. I think Murray prayed about it before. Those struggling to find jobs, you go, you know what, I know how hard that is. So God, I'm praying and fasting really this time so that others can find work, so others can find their purpose. For for broken families to come together. We look to the young people in our church, our high schoolers, our kids, and we go, you know what, I know what they went through. I know what they're going through, but I'm gonna fast and pray that they don't have to, that it is greater, that it is better. Grab that burden, grab that passion in your heart. And go, you know what, this is something I actually want to see change, a spiritual breakthrough I want to see happen. Come on, I don't, that, that just pumps me up just thinking about it. But there's all of a sudden there's a new sort of urgency and zeal with it. That it's not just, oh, if I mess up, I just miss out on, you know, maybe growing a bit more and stuff. But all of a sudden, man, I don't want that to change for that person. Man, I, I want to see their life completely different. I can't give up. I won't give up. I won't give in. Come on, there is a purpose. There is a passion God has put on your heart and it is for community. It is for others. I'm not saying that pray and fast and dedicate this time for yourself and the things you wanna see in your life. Grab hold of that dream. We know that's the word from God. But I also know He is saying, how can you do this for your community as well? How can you be looking outwards and and growing faith in others? I want to ask you, what does choosing uh, purpose over preference look like for you? Because, you know, there there is a preference in us, in me, for for letting those thoughts run wild. It's a preference, right? To to allow those labels to identify me and define me. There's a preference to it, to to letting those actions, those sins I commit, the habits, they make me feel good. There's a preference there. But does that line up with your purpose? That I am a child of God that I am created by God, called to to live a bigger life, a bigger purpose, that I am being transformed into the image of Christ. Do my preferences line up with my purpose? Come on, as you start that year, what does that look like for you? Do they line up? Come on, my preference is to eat. My preference is to spend time how I want. But my purpose? Come on, it's to feed the Spirit inside of me to grow closer to God, again, to be transformed into His image, not my own image. My purpose is to make a bigger difference in the world. Your purpose is to make a bigger difference in the world. And there are actions we can take, uphill habits we can develop, we can spend time together to do, to see ourselves get better, to see our year get better, to see our community get better, to see others get better. Come on, if you're sitting there thinking like, oh Ben, but I've tried that. It was so hard. Ben, I tried that. There's no way I could give that up. Well, man, that's fantastic. You just found a perfect thing to fast for for the next 10 days. But I want you to think about it. How different could you become? How far could God take you? Again, remember that imagination. No mind has imagined the things God has for us. We've got to grab hold of that hope. That hope that, hey, no matter what has happened, no matter what I'm going through, no matter the situation, God will get me through. God will deliver you. God has a greater plan for you, a greater purpose. And then we fuel that hope with the fact that others can experience it as well, that we can help others experience that same life-altering hope of Jesus by getting alongside them, 
Come on, we're praying, fasting, dedicating this to others, to our community here and now. Because when there are people in this place, in our community, we have a very large church. God has blessed us. There are so many people that need strength from your faith. Come on, I've, I, I've got a, I don't know, it's a passion, something, it's a dream I've got from God is I would love to see that the young adults in this church set the spiritual tone and bar of this place. Not, not just like, yeah, it's great. We've got Ken praying, we've got Murray praying. That's great. Things are happening. Yeah, it's awesome. They're doing things. But no, to be the ones that go, hey, youth, I see what you're doing and that's really cool, but I believe you should be up here because they're praying, they're believing. They're, they're looking at our kids ministry and our children and our families and going, hey, I, I, I get where you're at, but man, the faith that I have for where you could be, for where we should be, this whole church, it's up here. It's even higher. Come on, there comes a moment where we can decide to be a thermometer or a thermostat. Yeah. Come on, God has called us so much more than just to check the temperature and go, yeah, I, I know the temperature of our church. I know the temperature of this community. Yeah, other people, that's great. We've got prayer and fasting. There'll be a bunch of people there at 7 a.m. That's really good. I'm so glad as a church we're doing that. Or come on, we can be a thermostat. We can choose to set the temperature and go, you know what, because of... There's a quote from Dave Gilpin. He's a pastor. He came up here a few months ago for a night we had at church. And I've said it to our youth team, a lot of other teams uh, that I've led. And it's this quote, I love it. It says that we want to see people go further than we did and reach higher than we could. Man, just that heart of going, man, you know, uh, because of where I've been or what I experienced, I want to see people overcome that. You know what? They don't have to go through it like that. That is what we pray for. That is what we fast for. We grab that passion. We grab it. Come on, we, we, we let it motivate us. We go, God, I am doing this for them because you know what? They don't have to go through that. You know what? They will have a better life than me. You know what? The, the leaders coming through this place will be the best Red Frog leaders in this church after I'm gone. Come on, I look at our kids and go, man, they're gonna be the best youth leaders I've ever had. That our adults can look at our young adults, you guys, and go, man, they're gonna be the best family small groups we've ever had. It's gonna be pumping. It is gonna be incredible. Come on, we, we look out to our city and go, man, I can't wait till... There are so many more people who know Jesus because of our actions, because of how we followed God with faith. Come on, we've got to dream beyond ourselves. Grab that imagination. Grab that thing that stirs you up. Let it be your fuel. Let it be the thing that helps you get through this so you can get better, so you can improve. But man, we see a difference in our community. We see a difference in our city, in our world. Come on, what is God stirring in your heart for 2022? What would you love to see broken? What spiritual battle would you love to see shattered in this place? Be the reason for it. Not just there to clap and applaud when it happens. We go, man, I'm so glad I was praying for that. They might not know. They probably won't know. But you know that your faith helped make that happen. Not as we start this year, as we, you know, we're, we're a week off fresh air, but I think this is a great moment to, to pray and Lean into dedicating some time to disconnecting from, God, uh, from the world and connecting to God. I think it's important that we pray together. So can I pray for you? Can we pray together? Can we close our eyes as we focus on God that all things can happen through Christ? God, I thank You so much that You love us, that You were there for us and that You have planned for us to live a greater, bigger life. God, help us as we, we take this time to disconnect from the world and connect with You so we can change ourselves, so we can get closer to You, so we can understand the plans and purposes You have for us, so we can be stronger, so we can be better to see a bigger difference made in the world. But the things that, that offended us before, that we struggled with before, that hurt us before, they're not gonna do the same this year because we're gonna be stronger, because we're gonna be filled with more faith. And God, I pray right now that You stir in our hearts, Lord, a passion for how we can use this to grow this community, to help others. You know, right now, I, I want to do something a little different just as, as we're just praying, our eyes are shut. I, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. If you're a believer in this place, you're a Christian, you believe in Jesus, I want to challenge you. Come on, what is something that either you, you've struggled with when you were younger, as a kid, maybe some things have gone on in your family, your life, I want you to, something that makes you you know, mad, sad or glad. An issue, something you know that goes on in people's lives, a spiritual battle. 
I want you to grab hold of it. I want you to you know, focus it in your mind. Go, man, I'd love to see that change in people's lives. Maybe there's even a person you're thinking of, like, man, I, I, their, their life, man, I, I, they need Jesus. Man, people struggling with depression, people struggling with anxiety, uh, broken families, or there, there's finance issues, there's health issues. Whatever it is that sort of stirs in your heart, I'm like, man, that was tough. Or man, uh, the world would look different if that changed. I wanna challenge you to grab hold of that and make a decision that as we go into fresh air in a week's time, that as you're fasting and praying for your life, your family, your friends, your personal things, can I challenge you to write that on your list as well? You know, I'm, I'm fasting for our high schoolers. Come on, that they thrive this year, that they grow in faith, they grow in stature. Man, I, I'm praying and fasting for our kids, that these kids will know Jesus, they will grow up closer to Him. We're fasting people with uh, depression, anxiety, whatever it may be. Come on, I want you to grab hold of it, I want you to make that decision. Dedicate it to God in this time. Come on, because they need your faith to be set as the example. So God, right now we, we grab hold of this thing we're thinking of, this thing that, that you're stirring in our hearts and we dedicate it to You. God, we give it to You saying, God, this is something that I wanna see change. God, help my faith, stir my faith for this so that as I'm praying, as I'm fasting, this is something that's gonna make a bigger difference in their lives as well. God, I thank You so much. You're gonna help us through this as we do it together, as we get closer to You together. You know, maybe you, again, you're sitting there thinking, I wanna be this inspiration. I wanna be there to help other people. I mean, the first step we need to take, all of us we need to take is following Jesus, giving our lives to Him, the ultimate act of disconnecting from the world and connecting to Him. Come on, if you feel like that's the step you need to take tonight as you decide, I wanna be better, I wanna get stronger, I wanna know the life God has for me, I wanna help others. Make this decision, make this moment saying, God, I wanna follow You this year. God, this year I'm living the life You have for me. And if you need to make that decision to start this year, I'd just love to pray for you. If you could just give me a wave, raise your hand so I know who to pray for. Come on, I believe there are people in this room who need to make that decision saying, Jesus, I need to follow Jesus. I need to turn my right life around. I've been far away from You before, but it's time I come back. I see that hand, that's fantastic. That's awesome. That's great. Awesome. Well, God, I thank You so much. Lord, for every person as they're making this decision to follow You, God, that You reveal Yourself to them. Show them Your goodness. Show them Your greatness, God. Lord, that they can start hearing from You, seeing You, Lord. And Lord, put on their heart, show them, Lord, the things that You are calling them to do, the dreams You are calling them to live. God, You're such a great God. We thank You so much that You're always with us. Come on, in Your Name we pray. Amen.